In this lecture, we will learn about selection statements. Selection statements help you wrap a block of code so that it executes only when a certain condition is met. Selection statements are also known as conditional or branching statements. In MATLAB, a selection statement starts with the word if and ends with the keyword and. Following the if keyword, you would have the condition that will be evaluated, followed by a comma or semicolon, followed by zero or more statements that will be executed when the statement is true. Another usage of if statement is to have it follow an else statement. In this case, if something A is true, then the first block of code will be executed, Otherwise, do something Y will be executed. In the last example, we can change several conditions using if else if statements. So if something A is true, do something X. Otherwise, if something B is true, then do something Y. And if neither of those are true, then do something Z. Conditions in if statements are relational, also known as Boolean or logical expressions. And these expressions evaluate to a single scalar logical value that will be either true or false. If it is true, then we go inside the if block and execute the chunk of code. If it is false, we skip the body of the if statement, moving on to the next line of code. In the first three examples shown here, the condition of the if statement always evaluates to true, so MATLAB will go inside the if statement and print this always prints sentence. When you have a number instead of true or false, the way that MATLAB will interpret numbers is that anything that is not zero will evaluate to true, and anything that is zero will be considered false. So if 5 will be true, MATLAB will again print this always prints. In the third example, we have a variable. The if condition contains a plus 1. So that will be evaluated to 3 plus 1, giving us 4. Again, that's a true expression. And MATLAB will go inside this if statement. In the next three examples, the if condition evaluates to false. And that can either be a logical false, a number zero, or any complex expression that evaluates down to the number zero. In all of these cases, since the if condition is false, we will skip the body of the if statement as if it never existed, moving on past this if statement. The most natural way to construct conditional expressions is by using relational operators. So if you have a variable called x and you want to check whether it's equal to zero, you would say equal equal, testing its equality with zero. Relational operators take two operands and evaluate from these two operands a value that is true or false. The list of relational operators available in MATLAB are given in this table. So we have the greater than and less than signs, greater than or equal to operator, less than or equal to operator. The equality operator is composed of two equal signs, and the inequality operator is composed of a tilde followed by an equal sign. There's a very clear distinction between equality operator and the assignment operator. When you say x equals 5, you are taking the number 5 and storing it in the variable x. On the other hand, when you say x equal equal 5, this is an equality operator. You are testing whether x is equal to 5, and the result will be a true if x is 5 and a false if x is not 5 and this does not really store any values in any variables. It's essentially a mathematical operation similar to x plus 5. 
Let's take a look at these examples. In the first example, we are testing whether 3 is smaller than 5, which will give us the result true. But when MATLAB displays the value true in the command window, it will display it as the number 1. But you can take a look at the workspace, and the answer variable contains the value 1, but it is data type is a logical data type. So it will contain either true or false, when the value is 1, it is a true, and when the value is 0, it would be considered to be false. In the next example, we have an expression that will evaluate to false, and MATLAB will print 0. Arguments to relational operators can be any numerical value, and in this example, we are comparing the character A with character C, and if you remember from the ASCII table, the character A will have a numerical representation that is less than the character C, and as a result, we get the value true, which is printed as number 1 in the command window. When you use the result of a relational operation in an arithmetic expression, false will be considered as the number 0, and a true will be considered as number 1. In this example, we are testing whether 3 is smaller than 5, which will give us true, and we are storing that value in the variable a, so a will now contain true, and when we say a plus 10, this is an arithmetic operation, a will be converted into the number 1, and we will get 11 as an answer. You can take multiple logical values into a new logical value using logical operators. The AND operator tests whether the two operands are true. So in this case, we are testing whether both 3 less than 5 is true and also 15 greater than 10 is true. And since both of them are true, the result will also be true. In the second example, we are testing whether 3 is less than 5, so that will give us true, and 15 is less than 10, which is false and the result will be false because the AND operator returns true only when both of the operands are true. In the next example, we have the negation sign. The negation sign will take the expression that it is in front of and return the opposite. So if you have a true after the negation sign, the result will be false. If you have a false after the negation sign, the result will be true. In this case, we have 3 less than 5, which will be true, and negating that will give us false. There's an additional logical function called XOR, and this function will return true if and only if only one of its arguments is true. So the XOR of 3 less than 5, which is a true expression, and a less than c, which is another true expression, will give us false because XOR requires only one of the two operands to be true in order for the result to be true. In the next example, we have 3 less than 5, which is true, and a value false, and the result of this XOR statement will be true. And by the way, XOR stands for exclusive OR. The functionality of a logical operator can be described in a truth table. The truth table lists the output of an operator for all of its input values. So in this table we have the two operands x and y, and we are showing the result of not x, x or y, x and y, and the x or y. As you can see, the result of not x is always the opposite of x. So if x is true, not x will be false. If x is false, not x will be true. The result of x or y will be true if at least one of its operands is true. The result of x and y is true only if both of its operands is true. The result of x or xy is true if and only if exactly one of its operands is true.
An easy way to think about the OR operator and the AND operator is to think about the OR operator as addition and the AND operator as multiplication. So let's apply that to this table. If X is 1 and Y is 1, adding them up you would get a 2 which is a true. If X is 1 and Y is 0, when you add them up you still get 1 which is true. If X is 0, and y is 0, when you add them up, you get a 0, which is a false. Let's repeat it for the end. If x is 1, y is 1 in the first row, multiplying them, you will get a 1, which is true. If x is 1 and y is 0, multiplying them will give you 0. If x is 0 and y is 0, again, you will get a 0, which is a false. Now that we have more operators in our bag, we need to know where they stand in terms of precedence with respect to other operators that we work with. And this table lists the precedence rules for operators. And we start with the parentheses. So in an expression, you would always perform the expression inside the parentheses first, followed by the transpose and the power symbols, followed by the unary negation, and the NOT operator, followed by multiplication and division, addition and subtraction, the colon operator comes after them, followed by relational operators and the logical operators. So we have the arithmetic operators, which come before the relational operators, and those come before the logical operators. Given the precedence rules in the previous slide, let's now solve these problems. In the first problem, we have a relational operator that compares two numbers and an arithmetic operator that adds two numbers. Remember that arithmetic operators are performed before the relational operators, so we will be adding up 3 plus 1, and we get a 4, and then we are testing whether 4 is greater than 4, which is going to be false. In the next example, we again have a relational operator, the equality symbol, and an arithmetic operator, which is the addition. So we will again perform the arithmetic operation first. D plus 1 will give us the letter E, or its numeric representation, and that will be equivalent to the left-hand side, and as a result, we will get true. In the next example, we again have a relational and an arithmetic operation. So we will be performing the arithmetic operation first. 9 minus 2 is 7. 3 is less than 7. So we get a true. In the next example, we have a parenthesis. So parenthesized expressions will be performed first. 3 is less than 9 which is true, and then true minus 2. Remember that in the context of arithmetic expressions, logical values such as true will be considered to be number 1. So effectively we have 1 minus 2, and that gives us minus 1. The next example looks more complicated, but let's um, deal with it by categorizing the operators. So the equality sign is a relational operator, and then we have an addition, which is arithmetic, and then we have a logical end, and finally we have a relational greater than sign. Remember that we perform arithmetic operations first, followed by relational operators, and followed by logical operators. Let's identify the arithmetic operations first. We have a 3 plus 1, which will be evaluated to 4. So we will replace 3 plus 1 with the value 4. And then we have some relational operators, such as 4 equal equal 4, which will give us a true. So let's replace that with true. And then we have D greater than C which will again give us another true. And finally, we have the logical operator end, 
and both sides of the AND operator contain true, so the result of that will be true. The next example contains a mix of relational and logical operators, so let's perform the relational operators. 3 greater than or equal to 2 will give us true. x equal equal y will give us false. And then true or false will give us true. Remember that when you have an or operator, if at least one of the operands is true, the result will be true. In the next example, we have an exclusive OR. Remember that exclusive OR will give us true if and only if exactly one of its arguments is true. So let's evaluate its arguments. 3 greater than or equal to 2 will be true. x equal equal y will be false. So we see that exactly one of the arguments is true. The result of x OR will be true true. In the next example, we have a true, which is 3 greater than or equal to 2, and then x not equal y, which will evaluate to true, because x is in fact not equal to y. So the result of this will be false, since we have both of the operands true. The next example is a tricky one. You might think that since x is 0, this expression might evaluate to false because x is not between 3 and 5. But the way to interpret this expression is not by thinking that this is a test of whether x is between 3 and 5. You really need to perform the operators one by one. So let's just do that. 3 less than x less than 5. Let's first replace the value of x. So we have a 0. Next, we will perform the first relational operator. 3 less than 0, which will be false. And after that, we have false less than 5. Remember that in the context of arithmetic or relational operators, the value false will be considered to be 0. So we have a test of whether 0 is less than 5, and the result will be true. So the answer to this problem is true. The next problem is another tricky one. You might think that since the variable choice contains the letter n, this expression might be testing whether choice is equal to small letter y or capital letter y, which would be false if you think about it that way. The correct way to solve this problem is to perform the relational operator before the logical operator. So let's perform the relational operator first. The variable choice contains the value n, the letter n, and testing whether the letter n is equal to the letter y will give us the value false. And then we are testing whether false or letter y. So let's write it over here. False or letter y. Remember that when you are performing the OR operation, if at least one side of this operator contains a true value, the result will be true. So the left-hand side is a false, but the right-hand side contains the letter Y, and the numeric representation of the letter Y is certainly not zero. So the result of this expression will be true. Now that we know how to construct expressions that evaluate to true or false, let's revisit the if statement. In the if statement, the condition will be any expression that can be evaluated to true or false. And the action inside the if body will be performed only when the condition evaluates to true. When the condition is false, MATLAB will skip past the AND keyword and executing whatever is after that. Let's take a look at this example. We have an IF statement that tests whether the variable NUM has a value that's less than 0 
and if it is less than 0, then we will be adding plus 1 to it. The decision of whether MATLAB will execute this body of the if statement will depend on the condition that is being evaluated, and that depends on the value of the non-variable at the time of its evaluation. So we have two examples here. In the first example, we have a num variable that contains minus 5. If num is less than 0, let's replace the variable num with its value, minus 5. If minus 5 is less than 0, which will evaluate to true, so we will move into the if statement, and we will say num equals num plus 1. Let's again replace the value of num with minus 5. We get minus 5 plus 1 which is minus 4, and the minus 4 is stored in the variable num. So let's replace minus 5 with 4, and then this line of code will simply display, display the content of the num variable, which is minus 4, and in the command window, you will see minus 4 printed. In the box on the right, we again have the same if statement, but now the initial value of the num variable is different. So we have the num box again, and it contains 5. The if statement is testing whether num is less than 0. Let's replace num with its value 5. 5 less than 0 will be false. And MATLAB will skip the body of the statement, moving past the AND keyword and displaying the content of the num variable, which still contains the value 5. So in the command window, you will see the value 5 printed. In this exercise, we will write a script that will ask the user whether we're him or her. And if the user enters one of small letter Y or capital letter Y, we will print hello, and otherwise we will not print anything. So let's go to MATLAB and write this script. Edit, should I greet? And since this is a script, I don't need to write a function header. I will ask the user whether we should greet him or her. Should I greet you? Let's store the user input in a variable x. Next, I will check whether x is equal to small letter y or x is equal to capital letter y and I will display the message hello and end my if statement. Let's execute this from the command window. Should I greet? And let's type in the letter Y in single quotes and I get the hello displayed. Let's repeat the script. Now let's type the letter N in single quotes and nothing is printed since MATLAB does not go inside the if statement when x contains n, in which case this expression evaluates to false. In this exercise, we will write a MATLAB function called divisibility that will take a single input argument as an integer number, and it will display yes and no according to whether the number that we provided with is divisible by 2 and 3. So let's go to MATLAB and write this function, edit divisibility, since this is a function, I need to write a function header. It will return a single output argument y, and it will take in a single input argument x. To determine whether a number is divisible by another number, I can use the remainder function. Let's say x is equal to 16, and remainder of 16 by 2 will give us 0. Remainder of 17 divided by 2 will give us 1. Remainder of 17 divided by 3 gives us 2. Remainder of 18 divided by 3 gives us 0. So as you notice, the only time where the first number is completely divisible by the second number is when the remainder gives us the value 0. So we can check whether the remainder of dividing the first number by the second number is equal equal to zero, that will give us a true whenever it's divisible and a false whenever it is not divisible.
Now we can write this in the function divisibility using an if statement. If remainder of 16 divided by 2 equals equals 0, that means the number is divisible by 2. Let's display divisible by 2, yes. And let's end the if statement. Let's repeat this for the case where the number is not divisible by 2. So notice that I replace the equal equal sign with not equal sign. And let's print no. And we will copy and paste these two if statements and replace number 2's with number 3's to test divisibility by number 3. Let's test this function by calling it from the command window, divisibility 16. We get the correct answer, divisibility 9. We get the incorrect answer, and that is because we hard-coded the number 16 in these statements. We have to replace them with the number x, since x is being provided as the input argument to this function. Let's repeat divisibility 9 and we get the correct answers since 9 is divisible by 2 but not divisible by 3. This exercise illustrates the use of selection statements for validating input arguments. We will write a square root if function that will take a number x and it will return the square root of x if x is positive. Otherwise, we will notify the user that taking the square roots of negative numbers is not allowed, and instead we will return a not a number value. So let's go back to MATLAB and type edit square root if. Since this is a function, I need a function header. I will return a single value y, and I will take in a single input argument x. I need to check if x is greater than or equal to 0, then y will be equal to square root of x, and if x is smaller than 0, then I will display a warning taking square root of negative numbers is not allowed. And we will say y equals not a number, which will be returned from this function. Let's test this from the command window. Square root if 4 gives us 2. Square root if minus 4 displays the error message and returns not a number. When you have two complementary if conditions, instead of writing two separate if statements, you can combine them into an if-else statement. If the condition is true, then action 1 is going to be performed, otherwise action 2 is going to be performed. This is the same square root if exercise as before, but now instead of using two separate if statements, let's combine them into an if-else statement. So what we will do is remove these two lines and replace them with else. So if x is greater than or equal to 0, this code will be executed. Otherwise, we will display a warning and set y to be equal to another number. Let's save this function and go back to the command window. Square root if 4 gives us 2. Square root if minus 4 gives us the warning and not a number as before. Let's do the same conversion for the divisibility function that we just wrote. So what we will do is replace these two lines, combining the two if statements into an if-else statement. And also do the same thing for divisibility by 3. And the conversion is complete. We can test it again. And we see that it behaves exactly as before. When you have more than two conditions, you can implement it using multiple if conditions, or using nested if-else statements, or using if 
else if statements as we will see next. In this example, we would like to calculate the value of y depending on the value of x. If x is less than minus 1, the value of y will be 1. If x is between minus 1 and 2, the value of y will be x squared. And if x is greater than 2, the value of y will be 4. And each of these conditions is implemented in one of these if statements. For any given value of x, only one of these if statements will be true. And depending on which one is true, MATLAB will go into that if statement and execute the assignment of the y variable. We can implement the same functionality using nested if else statements. Here we consider whether x is less than minus 1. If so, we would set y equals 1. If x is not less than minus 1, then this chunk of code will be executed. And inside this else statement, we further consider whether x is less than 2 or if it is greater than 2. The behavior of this nested if else statements is identical to using multiple if statements. One other alternative to using nested if else statements is using if else if statements where we consider each condition one by one. So if x is less than minus one, we would set y equals one. Otherwise, if x is less than two, we would set y equals x squared. And otherwise, there's only one option remaining, which is x being greater than 2, we would set y equals 4. And this again implements the same behavior as the previous two implementations. In this exercise, we will write a function called print archetype that will take a single input variable x and it will print whether x is a scalar, a vector, or a matrix. Remember that a scalar is a matrix that contains a single element, so the number of rows and the number of columns is 1. A vector is where we have either one column or a single row, and a matrix is where we have more than one column and more than one row. So let's get this started in MATLAB. Edit print archetype. This is a function that will take a single argument, print arg type, let's call it x, and we do not need to return any output argument since all this function is doing is printing whether x is scalar, vector, or matrix. Um, to solve this problem, let's first identify the number of rows and the number of columns in x. To do that, we would use the size function when would x be a scalar? x would be a scalar when the number of rows equals 1 and the number of columns equals 1. Let's display scalar and if r is equal to 1 and c is greater than 1 then this is a row vector. Let's display vector if r is greater than 1 and c is 1, we have a single column, so this is a column vector. And the last condition is where r is greater than 1 and c is greater than 1, in which case we have a matrix. Now, let's first combine these two if conditions. The actions performed by each of these two if conditions is identical. So we can combine their conditions into a single condition by ORing the two conditions. So I'll just take this and copy it over here and remove the second if statement. So effectively what I have is checking whether R equals 1 and C is greater than 1. So this would be a row vector or whether I have a column vector and then I would print vector. 
Let's save this and test it in the command window. Print arg type and let's provide a single scalar value 3. Now let's provide a vector that contains only two elements. Let's provide a column vector and now let's provide a matrix. And we get the correct answer in each case. Let's rewrite this as a nested if else statement. In the first condition we would be checking whether it's a scalar and then let's combine everything else into an else statement. So if it's a scalar we will display scalar otherwise we will consider all the other cases in this else statement and within this else statement we are checking whether it's a vector or a matrix. Now let's go back and re-implement it as if else if statements. I can combine these into if else if statements. So let's do that. In the first condition I'm again checking whether it's a scalar, otherwise if it is a vector, and otherwise if it's a matrix. Since the third condition will be true if the first two conditions are false, I don't really need to provide this last condition since it will always be true if the first two conditions have not been met. Let's save it and repeat the tests and we see that it gets the correct answer. In this exercise we will write a function called getDayName that will take an integer argument x and return the corresponding day name. The day name here will be a character string. There are three ways of implementing this. The first one is to just have multiple if statements. So we would say if x equal equal one, then let's have our let's have our <coughs> let's have the returned argument to be s. So we would say s equals Sunday. And the next if statement will be if x equal equal two, s equals Monday, and and so on. This way we would list all the seven different options in separate if statements. The other method of imp imp the other method of implementing this is using nested if else statements. So we would again start by saying if x equal equal one s equals Sunday, otherwise, meaning else, we would contain all the other options inside this else statement. So what other options do we have? We have if x equal equal to s equals Monday, and another else statement that will contain the remaining options, and so on. In this manner, we would in this manner, we would implement the logic in nested if else statements. Nested because the inner in this manner, we would implement the logic as nested if else if statements. The last alternative is to implement this as if else if statements. So we would again say. So we would again list the first condition, which is x equal equal 1, and the first action, which is s equals Sunday, and then say else if x equal equal 2. So we are chaining, so we are chaining if else if conditions, in this case s will be Monday, in single quotes. And then the next condition, else if x equal equal 3 s equals Tuesday, and so on, listing all the conditions that we have, and finally ending with the end keyword. Now let's implement these three options as separate functions in MATLAB. Let's start with the first one, get day name one and in this function we will implement it as multiple if statements. This function will return a single output argument s, and take in a single input argument x.
which contains an integer number with a value between 1 to 7. So let's say if x equals equals 1, then s will be Sunday. And if x equals equals 2, s equals Monday. And when you have a single action in your if statement, you can write it in a single line. So let's do that for the next if statement. If x equals equals 2, s equals Tuesday, semicolon, and if x equals equals 4, s equals Wednesday. So if you are writing it in a single line, after the if condition, you need to put a semicolon. Let's copy and paste this line. So Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. One of the main causes of mistakes in programming is copy and paste. After you copy and paste, make sure that you make the appropriate changes in the copied code. So here we have seven if statements that separately test whether the value of x is any of the numbers 1 through 7 and it assigns a different value to the output s that will be returned from this function. And let's name this function as getDayName1 since we will be writing a different one for the nested if else statements. Let's call that getDayName2. Let's say yes so it creates the new function. Let's copy the code from the previous example and change the function name and restructure our if else if statement so it is nested after the first if statement we would write an else statement and place everything else inside this else block so let's copy it in here we can stop here or continue doing this for the rest of the if else statements so let's convert this one also into an if else block. Copy this code, place it inside the else statement. And so on. You can continue doing this until you get to the very last level of the nested statements. But we will stop here. Let's test the first two functions. Get day name 1, 3, which will give us Tuesday. 4 which will give us Wednesday. Let's test the second function and it gives us the same result. Now let's implement the same functionality using if else if statements and let's call that function get day name 3. <coughs> Again let's copy the code from the previous examples and make appropriate changes. So the function name will be get day name 3 and now I will have an if else if statement that combines the cases where x is 1 and x is 2. So this is the syntax. You would first say if x is equal to 1, do something else if x equals 2, do something else. We can stop here or we can do the same thing for the rest of the if statements. So let's do that else if and remove the end statements else if remove this else statement remove this end statement else if remove else if remove and we are done let's test the last function get day name 3 and we get the same result using if else if statements is the preferred method when you have multiple complementary conditions now if we say get day name and provide an input argument that is not between 1 and 7, we are not getting any outputs. If you would like to have a default value when the user enters an invalid number, you can start off your function by assigning a default value to the output argument. In this case, let's say s equals invalid day number. And let's make the same function called getDayName3 
and as a result we get invalid pay number. Let's trace the execution of this function by putting a breakpoint next to the line number and let's repeat the function called get day name 3 and let's provide a value 2 as the day number and the execution has stopped at the breakpoint that I placed and I will be hitting F10 or stepping to the next line and you can see that in the workspace I now have a variable called s that contains the value invalid day number. The first if statement is checking whether x is equal equal 1. In this case this is a false expression since the value of x is 2. So MATLAB skips the body of this if statement moving on to the next else if statement and this else if condition tests whether x is equal to 2. In this case we have x equals 2 so that is true. MATLAB will move into this else if statement as you can see from the green arrow. So right now the execution is on this line of code which will assign Monday into the variable s and as I step over this line of code you see that the value of the variable s has changed to Monday and the shape of the arrow has changed into a downward pointing arrow which means the function is done and MATLAB will be returning out of this function because we have executed one of the else if statements and the rest will be ignored. So when you have a chain of if else if statements as soon as one of them evaluates to true you perform that action and skip the rest of the conditions. If you have a single variable or a single expression and you have different values that this expression can take you can either use the if else if construct that we used in the previous example or you can use a switch statement. The way that the switch statement is structured is as follows. You would use a switch keyword followed by a variable name or a complex expression that evaluates to a single value. And then you would list different options that this switch expression can take using different cases. Each case would start the keyword case followed by a value for the switch expression and then inside the case block you would have the actions that would be performed when switch expression equals case expression. Similar to if else if statements in the switch statement only one of the cases will be executed so as soon as there is a match with one of the case expressions that action will be performed and MATLAB will get out of the switch statement after performing that action. There is a special keyword called otherwise that handles the case where the switch expression does not match any of the case expressions. In order to implement the previous example using switch statement we would for instance say switch x remember x contained a value that is between 1 and 7 and then we would say case 1 and then assign into s the value Sunday. So this line of code is the action that we will perform when x is equal to 1. Since this is a simple example we are performing a single action but you can also have multiple actions inside a single case. The next case is case 2 s equals Monday and so on all the way to case 7 s equals Saturday and finally we would have an otherwise statement where we assign s equals invalid day name and we would end the switch statement using the end keyword. In this exercise we are asked to write a function called print number that will print good if n is 0, 1, or 2, and it will print not good if n is 3 or 4. And it prints nothing if n is 5, and finally prints cannot decide otherwise. We can certainly implement this using if statements, but using a switch statement is both faster and easier to read. We would have the switch n, so we so we are testing the value of the variable n. If it is equal to 0, we will display good. 
If it is equal to 1, we will display good again. If it is equal to 2, again we display good. When it equals 3 or 4, we display not good. When it is 5, we don't have any actions to perform, so the action list is empty. Otherwise, if it takes none of the above values, we will display cannot decide. You can see that there is some redundancy in this switch statement because we are performing identical actions for different cases. To simplify this, we can combine the cases that implement the same action into a single case. And you would enclose the values that the variable n can take using curly brackets and the values will be separated by commas. So here we are again checking the value of n. If it is 1 of 0, 1 or 2, we will display good. If it is 1 of 3 or 4, we will display not good. When it is 5, we don't display anything, so nothing is printed. Otherwise, we display cannot decide. Here we are asked to implement the same functionality as we had with the getDayName when we did the if statements, but now we will be using a switch statement. So let's do that. Edit get day name switch is the name of our function. Let's copy the code from one of the previous examples so we don't have to write as much. Change the function name to get day name switch. We are switching on the value of x. If x is equal to 1, we will perform an action which contains assigning the value Sunday into the variable s. In case 2, we will assign the value Monday. Case 3, s equals Tuesday. Case 4, s equals Wednesday and so on. And otherwise, we will assign into S invalid day number. In this simple example, each of the actions in the case statements was a single line of code, but you can have multiple lines of code. Let's display when x equals 1. I am in case x equals 1. And let's execute this function, get day name switch. Let's give it a value 1. And you can see that I am in case x equals 1 is printed, and the function returns the value Sunday. If you want to get a little bit fancy when you are asking a user for different options, you can use the menu function. The first argument to the menu function will be the title, the question that you will be asking, followed by the different options that you would like to provide to the user. And when the user clicks one of these buttons, as a result, you will get an output value that contains either one, two, or three depending on which item user clicked. And then we would, in this example, switch based on that value. If the user entered one, we will print something. If the user entered two, we will print something else and so on. You can take this example and try it in MATLAB to see the result. When you are dealing with variables, you would often want to know what type of data they contain. And there are a bunch of is functions that tell you whether the value or the expression you provide them with are a certain data type. So in the first example, we have is letter character H, and we will get true since character A is a letter. On the other hand, if you ask whether the character 4 is a letter, you will get false. If you ask whether character 4 is a character, we will get true. If you ask whether the number 4 is a character, you will get a false, since number 4 is not a character, but it's a number.
let's work on this exercise where we will implement my is letter function that will return true if x is a letter and false otherwise. If x is not a character, we will return not a number. And of course, we are not allowed to use the built in is letter function. So let's implement this in MATLAB, edit my is letter. And this function will take a single input argument and return a single output argument. Let's first check whether x is a character. And if it is a character, we would further check whether it's a capital letter. So let's ask if x is greater than capital A and x is smaller than capital Z. So if x meets these two conditions, then it is in the range between capital A and capital Z, meaning it's a capital letter. The output variable should now take the value true. Let's end that if statement. If x is a small letter, it should be between small a and small z. And again, the output value will be true. And finally, if x is neither one of those, then the output value would be false. Instead of writing a complex expression, I will simply combine the multiple if statements into if else if statements. And when I'm considering the last case, I do not really need to write any conditions. I can just say y equals false. So first we check whether x is a character. If x is a character, then we will move into this if block, where we first check whether x is a capital letter, and then check whether x is a small case letter, and otherwise we set y equals false. Let's write the rest of the function. So when x is not a character, the body of this if statement will be skipped and then we will move into the else part and inside this else statement we would say y equals not a number. Let's test this from the command window. My is letter small letter a is true, small letter k is true, capital letter k is true number zero as a character is false number zero as a number it is not a number in this lecture we learned about selection statements and relational and logical operators when you are working with relational and logical operators there are some common programming mistakes that you should watch out for one of the most common mistakes is using an assignment operator when you should be using a double equal sign to test for equality. So when we say x equals 3, this is an assignment of value 3 into the variable x. We should not be saying if x equals 3, since this is not an equality test. Instead, we should be saying x equals equals 3, which is a proper test for whether x contains the value 3. When you are testing whether a variable contains a certain string, you should use a string value instead of a variable name. If you don't put single quotes around your variable name, then MATLAB will interpret it as a variable name and it will extract its contents, replace the variable name with its contents, and then perform the equality check. And the contents can be a number, let's say 5, or a character, let's say capital K. The proper test for this would have been to ask whether choice equals equals single quoted letter Y. Another common mistake is not spelling out an entire logical expression. In this example, it looks like we want to check whether radius or height is less than 0. But this expression will not accomplish that since MATLAB will first perform the relational operator which is height less than or equal to zero and that will give us a true or false. And then MATLAB will perform a logical operator on the radius or a true or false and return the result. The proper way of writing this expression would have been checking whether radius is less than or equal to zero or height is less than or equal to zero. The next issue that I'm going to describe is not really an error, but it's a redundancy. 
When you are testing whether something is 0 or 1, you can usually omit the equality. In this example, we are testing whether x is smaller than 5 is equal equal 1. x smaller than 5 is a relational expression and it will give us a true or a false. When it is true, the equality with 1 will give us a true. When it is false, the equality with 1 will give us a false. So as you notice, we can actually omit the equal equal 1 and directly use the value of this relational operator which will contain true or false. Another redundancy is when you are unnecessarily writing else if statements. So when you have a list of if else if statements, if the else if condition is a complete complement of the previous if expression, then you can omit the condition and just rewrite it as if x equal equal 5 then perform action 1 else perform action 2 and and that's the end of the lecture